Welcome to video editing with Adobe Rush. In today's video, we'll start by going over the basic interface of Rush. Then we'll look at effects like color, transitions, titles, and text that will make up your video aesthetics. Then we'll talk a bit about sound editing. And finally, we'll explain how to export your video. Let's get started. If you've never opened Rush before, the first thing to do is click on New Project as soon as you launch the software. Sometimes Rush will try to offer you tutorials and walkthroughs. You can do those if you'd like, or you can exit those right now because we'll go over much of that material together today. Make your life easier by keeping your work organized from the start. Be sure to name all of your files, including your project, descriptively with the title, course number, and date. You can do that here in the bottom left-hand corner. When you create your file, you may also want to adjust some settings. You can do this by pressing the gear icon next to the project name highlighted by the yellow arrow here. You can choose the aspect ratio you'd like your project to have. If you don't choose one, Rush will automatically select one based on the clips that you've imported. You can also adjust two effects. First, you can turn off or on auto reframing. This is a feature that will automatically match new clips to the current aspect ratio of your video. And second, you can turn on or off pan and zoom photos, also known as a Ken Burns effect. Enabling this will automatically apply pan and zoom to all still photos that you import. We recommend turning this off because it's something that you can manually add and adjust later. When you begin to select clips, do your best to select them in the order that you'd actually like them to appear in the video. You can certainly rearrange the clips later on, but selecting them in order will just help give you a sketch outline of your video and avoid any glitching or technical issues later on. And for the same reason, be sure to import multiple clips rather than just one at a time if possible. After you've done this, you can click the blue Create button in the bottom right-hand corner. It's important to note that Rush will automatically save your file as you're working to your Creative Cloud account, so that when you log back in, you'll see, see your file under Your Projects. And you can click on this to continue working when you return to this session. But just a note of caution here, be sure that you don't delete your file from the cloud since that's where it's being stored. Unfortunately, it's not currently possible to share your projects in Adobe Rush with partners, but what you can do is open up your Premiere Rush project in Adobe Premiere Pro, where you can save the file and share it as you normally would. However, keep in mind that you cannot open a Pro project within Rush, so be sure you've finished editing in Rush before you move it to Pro or simply commit to using Pro. Pro is excellent and robust software as well, but it's much more complicated than Rush, and so you may need to seek out additional resources for that software. All right, let's move on to talk about some basic principles of editing. When you open your project, you'll notice that there's a workspace already set up for you. The first thing you'll see on the top here is your program monitor. This is where you can preview all of the changes and editing you're doing to your project as you're working on it. And at the bottom, you'll see the timeline. On the timeline, you can see a visual representation of the individual clips that you've added in order. This is the sequence of your project. It contains not only video clips, but any still images, text, graphics, or audio that you've included as well. Now on the timeline, you can see a number of what we call tracks. These are different spaces where you can place your media. Tracks are a way to organize your sequence and each can be controlled separately. In Rush, the top four tracks are for visuals and the bottom three are for audio. Objects placed on higher tracks will be played over those below. Notice here that I've also clicked on the Control Tracks button in the lower left-hand corner. This brings up more information for each track, so I can lock it to prevent changes, mute it, or close the eye to make it invisible. This is very useful when you want to see how something looks with or without a particular change. I like to keep these open as I work, but you can also close them and just open them when you need to if that's easier. The blue cursor is called the playhead, and this indicates where you are in your timeline.
You can view your available media for the project by clicking on the small bin icon in the upper left-hand corner. This will open your project assets panel, which contains all the different pieces of media that you want available for your project. It can include video clips, still images, graphics, or audio. You'll pull new media into this box first by simply dragging and dropping from another folder, and then you can place it on your timeline from there. I want to point out how similar the mobile version is. You can see here that the setup is largely the same. This will be the case for iOS or Android. It's simply been condensed for your mobile screen and rearranged a bit for a new aspect ratio. But I can continue to scroll back and forth through the editing tools at the bottom here instead of the sides. Otherwise, it, all of these tools will work in the same way and the icons are identical. One small difference is that instead of moving the blue playhead back and forth, you'll actually scroll through the entire area of tracks and the playhead will stay in the middle. We'll continue on a desktop because it's a bit easier to see, but you should have no trouble following these same steps in the mobile version if you'd prefer to use that. Okay, let's start by getting an overview of the key tools that you'll use in Rush for editing. First, on the left-hand side, you have split clip, which looks like scissors, duplicate clip, delete clip, expand audio track, and control tracks. Split clip will cut your clip at a particular point. Duplicate clip will copy and paste a clip for you. Delete clip will delete a clip. Expand audio track will just give you a little bit more space to see the audio as you're adjusting it. And control tracks will open up the functions I mentioned just a moment ago. And then on the right side, you have a set of buttons that will open panels for various editing functions. These include graphics, effects, color, speed, audio, and crop and rotate. If you don't remember these, don't worry about it. Adobe makes this very easy. You can simply hover over the icon and it will tell you what panel it will open. Let's take a look at each of these panels in turn. One of the first things you'll want to do when editing is what we call trimming a clip. Say you filmed an interview, but you want to get rid of the small talk in the beginning or cut a bit off the end. To do this, simply hover your cursor over the beginning or end of a clip, and it will change appearance to a yellow, close par a yellow parentheses with an arrow pointing to the direction you want to trim it. Now you can simply click and drag the clip to be either longer or shorter. Note that this trimming, as well as any other edits you make, are what we call non-destructive editing. So just like Photoshop or other editing programs you may be familiar with, you're not actually cutting or destroying in any way the media file itself, but you're simply telling Rush what section you'd like to be included in the project you're working on. So if you want to go back later and include the parts that you cut out, that's no problem at all. You'll also want to split clips at various points. To cut footage in the middle of a clip, simply move your playhead to the location where you'd like to make a cut, and then click the scissors button in the left-hand toolbar. It will then split your clip. Splitting clips is useful when you want to, for example, show part of an interview, then show another image or clip, and then go back to the interview. Another thing you'll want to do is add a title. This is something that we can do in the next editing panel. You can add titles through the graphics panel, which you can find in the upper right hand corner. When you open the graphics panel, you'll see a button that says add graphic. If you press this button, you'll open a graphics pane on the left hand side of your window. Here you can search for various kinds of graphics to add, including titles. We recommend choosing simple graphics that will make your video look streamlined and professional. Here, I've added a simple lower third title by pressing the blue add button after clicking on it. You can see that this has added it to my timeline above my video clips. This means that it will play at the same time as those clips, but show up over top of them. Just like my video clips, I can adjust how long I want the title to show up when it starts and ends and so on. 
On the right, you can see that I have new options in the graphics panel to adjust the font of my title. You can make lots of adjustments here to make it look however you'd like. The next panel allows you to adjust effects. There are all kinds of effects you might use when editing a video, but we'll talk specifically about transitions and framing, which will likely be the most important. When you open the effects panel, the first thing you'll notice is transitions. To add a transition, you'll first want to highlight the clip that you'd like to apply it to. This one I want to apply to my title graphic, so you can see that I've highlighted that. Let's say that I want my title to wipe away to one side of the screen while we move on to the next clip. Making sure that my title graphic is highlighted on the timeline, I simply click on Wipe Right to add that effect to the clip. You'll see that it's added a small icon of the effect on either side. This is how I can tell what effect is being used, and I can also adjust the length of this transition by clicking and dragging on those new gray handles. But what if I want that transition to play in a different way, like take a longer time on screen, for example? This is also something that you can adjust. Note that you might have to zoom in as I've done here by simply pressing the plus sign a couple of times. You can zoom out by pressing the minus sign. That'll make it a little easier to see and then grab and drag the effect. Note that you can also zoom in and out by dragging on the handles of the horizontal scroll bar at the bottom of your window. So to change the duration of my transition, I can simply hover over the edge of that handle, click and drag just like I did to trim or expand clips. Another important effect is creating transitions between clips. A quick note about transitions. These should also be unnoticeable to your viewer. Try not to get too fancy. Choose those that are simple, make your, look, your video look professional and streamlined. So to add these, highlight the clip next to the break where you'd like a transition to occur, and then click on the transition that you'd like to use. Here you can see I've added a dissolve between two clips. Just like on the title, I can adjust the placement and duration of the dissolve. I can also add still images to my video, which you may find that you'd like to do. However, you'll often want to give it a little bit of motion so that it blends in with the rest of the video. After dragging and dropping my image into my project assets bin, I can simply drag it from there onto the timeline, as you can see I've done here. Now you'll have the option to use pan and zoom. You'll notice that this brings up two boxes within your program monitor that say start and end. One here is blue, which is the one that's active, and I also have end, which is currently in white. These allow you to define starting and ending frames for what we often call the Ken Burns effect. This will create some panning and movement across your image. You can simply click and drag on these boxes to where you'd like them to be using the handles at each corner, choosing your starting and ending frames. Along with this kind of movement, you may want to change the speed of one of your clips or a portion of the clip, for example, to show something in slow motion. To do this in Rush, simply click to open the speed panel on the right. Then make sure you've highlighted the clip that you want to adjust. You'll notice these blue handles appear on either side of the clip. These allow you to adjust the range of the speed change. In other words, where you'd like the speed change to start and where you'd like it to stop. You can pull them to any part of the clip that you'd like. You'll also notice that you can adjust the range in the speed panel on the right. Under range is where you can adjust the speed itself to be slower or faster with 100% or original speed in the center of the slider. You may also find that you'd like to change the shape or orientation of your clip. For example, here I've added a clip that is in portrait instead of landscape orientation. You can see this is the case in the clip preview in the timeline, noticing that there's black filling in either side of that portrait orientation. However, notice that when I placed it on the timeline, Rush automatically tried to reframe the image so that it's the same as the rest of the sequence. However, you can see that in doing so, the figure in the image has been cut off quite a bit. What if I don't like how Rush has done this and I want to include the figure in the frame instead? To make this adjustment, I can use the transform panel. Rush makes this very easy. 
First, I can simply click and drag using the handles on the frame, and I can pan by clicking and dragging on the image itself. In doing so, I can easily readjust which part of the frame is included. Now I can see more of my figure. Notice that doing so has also changed the position of the sliders in the transform panel. You can adjust the position using these if you'd like to be more precise. In this same panel, you can also adjust zoom in and out using the scale sliders. And under advanced, you can crop the image as needed. As you can see that I've done here, you can make other transformations like rotating the perspective or even feathering the edges. However, again, I recommend using these very judiciously. Most of the time, it's not necessary. I'd also like to note that if you would prefer your clip show up in an orientation different than the rest of your video, for example, here showing up in portrait mode instead of landscape like the rest of my video, you can certainly accomplish that in Rush. I just click on my clip and then click fit highlighted here in the top of the panel and you can see that the program then fits my portrait style clip right into the frame and simply fills the rest with black space. However, try to avoid this unless you're doing it for a clear and specific purpose. Another effect you may want to explore is color correction in the color panel. In the color effects panel on the right here, You'll first see a number of presets that you can choose from. These work just like filters in other programs. And you can adjust the intensity of each of these presets with the intensity slider at the bottom of the panel. Also notice these buttons at the top of the color panel. The first allows you to apply the setting to all clips across your video. This is great to ensure that you have a consistent look. And the second button with the backwards arrow allows you to revert the clips to their original color. So feel free to play around here. You can simply revert it back if you decide that you don't like it. If you don't want to use a preset, you can also go in and adjust the color just as you'd like it. Clicking the edit panel opens these options. Next, let's take a look at sound editing in Rush. First, you'll bring up the audio panel, which you can see here on the right. You could click the browse button in the audio panel to open up a number of sounds and songs that have already been included in Rush for you. You can click one and press the blue add button at the bottom to add it to your timeline right where the playhead is situated. You can also bring in your own music by simply adding it to your project assets box and then dragging it into your timeline. You can raise or lower the volume of your clip here under basic. If you expand advanced options, you can also make adjustments depending upon the type of sound that you'd like to include, voice, music, or other. For example, here are some additional options that you can use when you add a voice track, such as reducing background noise. Also under Advanced, you can open the channel sliders. Here you can adjust whether sound is being played in the left or right ear. This can create some pretty cool effects, so you may want to play around with the feature. Finally, you can watch the volume of your tracks here in the lower right hand corner. You can use this to ensure that your tracks are playing at a consistent volume. The ideal audio range is between negative 12 to negative 6 decibels. You'll see the sound is yellow when it's in that range. When it's really loud, the program can't actually play the sound properly, so it sounds quite garbled. Here, obviously, you can see that my sound is too loud, and you might notice this when you bring sound in, but it's no problem. I can simply lower the volume of the track until I'm in the yellow where I'd like to be. So that's the very basics of video and audio editing in Rush. Let's talk about how to export this project once you're done editing. When you're happy with your video, you'll need to export it. To do this, first click on the Share tab at the top. You'll want to save the video to the device that you're working on, so you should turn on Local under Destinations. This means your local device. 
We suggest saving it to your local device before uploading it to various social media sites if that's your intended destination, simply because it gives you more control over your media file. Be sure to name your file something descriptive so that you can easily identify it later. If you expand advanced settings, you'll have a few more options. Under preset, you can adjust the resolution to automatic or several Facebook or YouTube oriented settings. I would suggest leaving the other settings the same. Then simply click export the blue button in the bottom right hand corner. And then it may take a bit of time to render. The higher resolution, more edits you've made, the longer it may take to render. But when it's finished, you can simply click done and the file will appear where you've told it to go. Congratulations, that's, congratulations, that's Premiere Rush. You've exported your first video. I hope you've enjoyed the process.